You're running for president, which is the big news, but we will get to that. First, take a little time to introduce yourself, what you have studied, the work you do, and the books you have published. I'm the author of, I think it's 11 books now. Uh, my wife and I, we have eight children, and um, I operate the new St. Thomas Institute. So we do online courses in philosophy, theology, Old Testament, New Testament, early church, all kinds of great topics that uh, we have over 3,000 students all over the world. And so my, my background is education and um, equipping people to think philosophically. We do courses on logic, how to think properly. And of course, uh, the passion of my life is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the King. And you know, one of the things that I've experienced working in politics and being involved is we have this idea that uh, some people have this idea that the public square, the place where we debate and do public discourse and politics is somehow, it could somehow be a neutral vacuum where we could all come and use pure reason and come to just rational agreement on policies. And I think people nowadays have realized that's just not the case. And, and maybe the idea of Christians being Christians in the public space and being vocal about it, maybe that is what we need to return to. It's certainly something we had for centuries and we got off track. And I think if you look look now, what's going on about to happen in June and, and all the things that are happening in our country, we're losing the war because in a way we're giving the battleground to secularism and to humanism. Yeah, I, I so totally agree I just want that. to shine light on that. So yeah. let, let's talk about June and this, this will be interesting. So a group gets to pretend like they're oppressed while they get a whole month dedicated to them. A group gets to pretend as if they're marginalized while they basically get an excuse from the mainstream media and public health authorities to engage in the most degenerate behavior. And so let's get a little deep here. The philosophy, how is it that we have been hoodwinked to basically believe a group that has everything basically given to them also simultaneously gets to play a month-long victim card. Help us unpack this. I think it's really interesting. Well, I, I hope the viewers are familiar with what's called the Overton window. Yeah, so they, the Overton they are, window and we talk about it a lot, but please, yes. Great. Okay, so y'all already know, but just for people that don't know, the Overton window is the window, the portal of ideas that are socially and politically acceptable to talk about. So, Charlie, if we went back in like the 1990s and we said, hey, what do you think about gay marriage to all the Democratic candidates? They'd be like, oh, no, that's unthinkable. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want that. Now, it's a major issue. Why? What happened? Well, the Overton window shifted over time, and now it's acceptable. So I think the best analogy is you have two teams on a, a tug of war. They're on each end of the rope, and they're pulling. And people are like, I'm going to go pull on that end, or I'm going to go pull for the Republicans or Democrats. And the idea of the Overton window is there are certain people who are the philosophers, the clergy, the religious leaders who go to the middle of the rope and they grab that rope and they begin to pull it sideways laterally so that the debate between the Republicans and the Democrats, they're pulling always, but the debate and where that tug of war is happening gets pulled to the left or to the right by these, we call them today, influencers. Um, Socrates would call them sophists. And so what's happened is, is the Overton window is shifted so that even in conservative Republican circles, they're agreeing and assenting to policies and philosophies that not even Democrats would have accepted in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to do in, in preparing to run for president is what my hope is, is to shift the Overton window. I want to grab the middle of that, that rope and the tug of war and say, hey, hey, let's pull over here and let's discuss some of these issues that are dear to Christians, mm -hmm. which is a major base, way bigger than the, the base of LGBT. And, and so the LGBT gets support from the media, from the corporations. And I mean, we call them, you know, the alphabet mafia because they have a totalitarian almost component to it. I think the T in LGBT stands more for tyranny than it does for trans. Where did this, so, I mean, Matt Walsh, who's one of the clearest thinkers on this, has kind of this sequence, which I'm sure you've said, maybe you came up with it, and he said, I don't know who, where it came from, but 
to just give attribution to Walsh from because he first said it is first they make you tolerate it and then they make you accept it, then they make you celebrate it, then they make you participate. I think that's the smartest way to summarize it. And so going into June, you're going to be judged if you don't have the flag, if you're not marching in the parade when it was first masquerading as first saying you must tolerate this. So how did tolerance become mandatory participation? How did that happen? Well, it's just like you said with 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 what Walsh said, you 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 have to shift the Overton window. And I, I think a lot of conservatives think, OK, well, we just need to go ahead and legislate morality, which, of course, legislation always has to do with morality. But you first have to influence the discussion. And I think that's one reason why a guy like Charlie Kirk is getting shadow banned on Twitter, because you're one of those people and there's many others as well who are talking about these issues and you're shifting the Overton window in a certain direction that they don't like. And so they have to block it. Right. And I, I want to challenge the audience to think, what if we, what if everyone who believed that matrimony is between one man and one woman until death do us part and everyone that believed that when human conception happens, that's a human person. What if we all united on that and we started asking for public federal recognition, which is exactly what they've done in the alphabet soup. Mm -hmm. We would get it. We would win. I think a lot of people think we, 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 we lost and we can't get it. We would win. We would be able to do it if we united and we, and we pushed for it. And I think these people have been organizing and pushing for it and strategically shifting the Overton window for decades. And now everyone else is waking up and saying, how do they do this? Well, they worked really hard. And do we as Christians, are we as committed to our worldview as deeply as they are committed to their worldview? Until we answer that question, it does. we can complain all we want about Bud Light and Dylan Mulvaney and, and now, uh, what is it, Target now. They've got all these and crazy Adidas outfits out of Target. Adidas and all of this, yes. Adidas, exactly. Um, but do we actually demand recognition. I mean, the LGBT have been able to plant their flag, literally their flag at all the federal monuments, state monuments, even at all the embassies around the entire world. The British empire wasn't been able this to successful. The, the British empire was not even this successful in their heyday of colonization. It's the most successful colonization project in world history. And yet they still get to tell us they're the victim. They've conquered every square inch of elite infrastructure. And they tell us that they're oppressed. 